okay. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Consuming Fire Teaching and Deliverance Ministries. Today is September the 14th, 2022, and it is our Wednesday night Bible study. I am uh, Sister Jeanette, and I will be teaching the lessons tonight um, so that our pastor can celebrate her, her birthday. Um, so we've already prayed. Um, I would suggest that you get a pen and a piece of paper. So I'll allow everybody a, 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 just a, a brief time to get a pen and piece of paper. I realized that, you know, Bible study is actually our spiritual class and um, want to learn. So we should have us some pen, piece of paper so that we can take any notes that me, we may want to, you know, reference back later. Okay, so I hope everybody had time to get a, a pen and, and paper. So tonight, what we're going to be studying on is requirements to be equipped for kingdom work. So it, we there's some requirements of us in order to be effective workers in the kingdom of God. There's going to be some, some requirements that we're going to go over tonight that's required of us. And so if you have your pen and paper, I would suggest you write down what is required of us. The first one word, what we're going to do, we're going to go over, I think, six words. First word is faith. The second thing that's required of us is believe, to believe. The third word will be trust. The fourth word will be obedience. And when working out this part of our requirements, there's gonna be some additional qualities, characteristics and, and, and skills that we're gonna have to develop to put into work. That word is going to be strong, And the last word is going to be courage. So before we can know what's required of us, we have to have a full understanding of what each one of the requirements mean. So first word we're gonna take is faith. So faith is the complete trust or confidence in someone or something. And for us Christians, born again Christians, it is God. Second part of faith is a strong belief in God based on a spiritual apprehension rather than proof. So, We'll get into that. The next word was believe. So believe is to accept as true, to believe that something is true. You feel sure of the truth of what it is. So we have faith and we have belief. 
The next word is trust. And trust is to have confidence and hope. So we have faith, believe, trust, and now we're at obedience. Obedience is to come in compliance with submission to another's authority. And again, as born again Christian, we need to come into the submission of God's authority. And that is obedience. So we can be in compliance with whatever God's will is for our lives for us to do. So now we're gonna talk about what it's gonna take for us to actually achieve faith, believe, trust and obedience is strong. You're gonna have to be strong. Definition of strong, having the power to move a heavy weight and perform demanding tasks, able to withstand great force or pressure. In the natural realm, it would be the, the ability to move physical, tangible things to absorb pressure, to be able to withstand pressure. But in the spiritual realm as believers of Christ, we know that things are spiritual and they're spiritual pressures. The last is courage. The ability to do something frightening to you. It takes courage to move forward in something that may be frightening. But God will, if we are obedient and come into compliance with his order, equip us for the work of the kingdom. So now that we know what's expected of us, now we're going to go into God's word and allow him to walk us through how to become ready and fit for kingdom work. So the first scripture that we are going to go to is going to be about faith. That scripture is going to be Hebrews 11. So Hebrews 11, and for the sake of time, because there's a lot of examples, I'm going to shorten the scripture and I'm going to give you the who was operating in faith and what happened when they operated in faith. And then you can go back a little later on your own time and read over Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11 is full of examples of faith by people in the Bible. And we're familiar with the names, um, but it's just good to know and just to remind ourselves, excuse me, of how important faith is. So Hebrews 11 and one. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. 
for by it, the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were formed, were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than, than Cain. Verse five, by faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. Verse six, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that come to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So there you see faith and belief working together. By faith, Noah being warned of God of things not seen yet, but he moved with fear and prepared the ark. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go uh, out into a place which he should after receive for inheritance, obeyed. So now we got faith, belief, and obedience working together. And he went out not knowing whether he went. He didn't have no idea where he went because he went in faith, he didn't, he didn't know. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise as a strange country. So now we're gonna skip down because I wanna continue in the faith and go to verse 11. So we're gonna go over verse 10 and go to verse 11. Through faith also, Sarah herself received strength. So there we have that faith in enabling the strength that we're gonna need. Strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child. So we know that Sarah was old in her age, but by her faith, she received the strength that she needed to conceive the child and to deliver the child. So now we're gonna go through down to verse 13. These all died in faith, speaking about all of these, because this was in the Old Testament. This took, even though it's written in the New Testament, this took place in the Old Testament. So these all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confess that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. So we know in the Old Testament that Jesus wasn't, wasn't born yet. So these are the Old Testament saints that had faith from afar off before Jesus even came, but they, they believed. So you, it's going to take your faith, you're going to have to trust, you're going to have to believe, and you're going to have to um, be obedient. All of those are required for us to be effective workers in the kingdom of God. So I just wanted to kind of lay the faith foundation down for us today. So I want you guys to go on back, you know, during your leisure and read over Hebrews. Hebrews is just examples of faith. Is that so if you ever want to, you know, have some encouragement on faith, you got Hebrews 11. So 
we're gonna go on into believe. Okay, because that, that's a requirement of us to build our faith. We have to believe. Okay, so I'm going to, we're gonna go over to John and now is when we are gonna start having some active participation. I just wanted to read the faith because I didn't wanna read the whole scriptures. So we're gonna go over to John 2. So in John 2, and um, let me see, whoever wants to volunteer, we can start a circle and go around and one can read after the other. So whoever would like to read first, if you can unmute yourself and just let me know that you're going to read, and then I'll give you your scripture. I'll read. Okay. So Sister Diana, you're going to read John 2, 12 through 19. So... This is when, this is right after Jesus performed the first miracle. So we just learned about this on, I think it was Sunday, Pastor was speaking about the first miracle. And, um, and Pastor didn't know the scriptures that I was, that I, she, I didn't give her any of my scriptures, but God is just, when you just connect it, God, you just can, and, and you just walk in, in faith with the Lord, you could just see the connections just begin to take place. So this is after um, he performed the first miracle and went on to Capernaum. So Sister Diana, if you would read um, verse 12 through 19. Unmute yourself, Sister Diana. Now, on my John 2, it only goes to 13. Am I looking in the wrong John 2? You, oh, you know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Okay. We're going to, to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Oh. John chapter 2. Sorry about that. I'm sorry. <laughs> 1683. Okay. 16. Okay, John, John 2, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and is that starting on the third day? No? No, you're going to go to, to John chapter 2, verse 12. You're going to start at verse 12. After he went down, yes, one? After, yes, okay. After he went down to the Capernaum, Capernaum with his mother and brothers and his disciples, there they stayed for a few days. When it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple courts, he found people selling cattle, sheep and doves, and other sitting at tables, exchanging money. So he made a whip out of cords and dro drove all from the temple's courts, both sheep and cattle. He scattered the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. To those who sold doves, he said, Get these out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a market. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then responded to him, what sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this? Jesus answered then, destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days.
Unmute yourself, Sister, Sister Jeanette. Lord, I'm so sorry. Okay. So this, this took place right after Jesus performed the first miracle of turning the water into wine. So now he's went up with his disciples and he said in verse 19, because once he overturned the, the tables, now people are beginning to become upset with him because he's beginning to go to work. So they're beginning to see him in action. So they're beginning to become upset. So that's why he said, Jesus answered unto them when they demanded the question, he had all, he spoke what was to come. When he said, destroy this temple and in three days, I will rise it up. I will raise it up. So they were baffled because they weren't really understanding well, what do you mean raise it up in three days? So we're going to read verse 20 through 22. And who's going to be the next reader for that? I will. Okay. Uh, John 2, St. John 2, 20. Okay, get my eyes right. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building, and wilt thou rear it up in three days? But he spake of the temple of his body. How far? 22. When, when therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this unto them, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. Okay, so now here we are have, having belief beginning to go to work in the disciples because when Jesus spoke to the Jews and he said, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. So they're stuck on the temple in which they're selling the merchandise in from when he turned the tables over. They're thinking, how are you going to raise this temple up in three days when it took us 46 years to build this temple? But they weren't aware of the temple that Jesus was speaking about was his own body. Because as we know, when he gave up the ghost, the veil ripped in the temple from top to bottom. So it was no longer necessary for the priest to go and go behind the veil to confess the sins for the people because Jesus broke all of that. He is the way, he became the way. So that's what he was trying to explain to them was when you tear this, you, when you destroy this temple in, in three days, I'll raise it up. He was speaking future and they didn't even realize it. But then in 22, when it said that he was risen from the dead, the disciples remembered. They remembered that he had said this unto them. He had told it to them. And what happened? And they believed. So here we are starting to get into the belief. You have to believe. So the next scripture that we're going to read is going to go, we're going to stay in the book of John, but we're going over to chapter three. And I don't know who the next reader would be. I can read it. Okay. Which what chapter three? So what? it's right, you you just we're gonna stay right in this chapter. So we're gonna be, I mean, right in this book, same book of John, only we're gonna go to to three and 
and 12. Now, now once, once we've already went through the, the, um, the miracle, and now disciples are beginning to believe, right? So now in verse three, this is when Nicodemus is asking Jesus, you know, speaking to speaking to Jesus and Jesus is explaining to him, except you be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. So now we're going to go on and we know that this story, well, I hope, well, you know, how Nicodemus was asking Jesus and Jesus explained to him. So now we're going to come down here to verse 12 and you're going to read now John 3, 12 through 15. Okay, 3, 12 through 15. Mm -hmm. If I have told you earthly things and you believe not, how should you believe? if I tell you of, of heavenly things. And no man has ascended up to the heavens, but he that came down from heaven, even the son of man, which is in heaven. 14, and, and as Moses lifted up the serpent from the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up so that's that, good for you to 14 i'm sorry oh okay to 14 that was it we're gonna go back over and talk about um 12 so now is when jesus is explaining how can if i if i tell you about earthly things and you don't even believe earthly things how can i how can you believe heavenly things? Again, believing in something that you that you haven't seen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. You haven't seen any of this. So if you don't believe in what you can see, how are you going to believe in heavenly things that you haven't even seen before? So Jesus came down to earth from heaven so he's just getting them to to see you it's about believing you know and you have to believe in what you can't see that's where faith to believe comes in so then in 14 and as moses lifted up the servant in the wilderness even so must the son of man be lifted up and verse 16 through 18 tells us why he must be lifted up so whoever the next reader is they can read 15 through 18. i'll read it okay verses 16 through 18. 15. oh 15 through 18. yes Oh, I wrote 16, okay. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So there you have it. Belief. In order to be equipped and the re meeting the requirement, belief is a requirement for kingdom work. For 14 told us, even so must the son of man be lifted up. He had to be lifted up, why? So that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. 
for God sent his son into the world, not to condemn it. Jesus didn't come to condemn the world, but through him, the world might be saved. So there's no other way. You have to believe that God is, that he sent Jesus, and that Jesus is the way to eternal life. 18. Now, here's where, when you don't believe, because we are all given a free will. So we can either believe or not. But God always lets us know what the reward is and what the consequence is. So it's not, and, and you have a free will, just as pastor was often teaches us about the soul. The soul belongs to you. So wherever you decide for it to go, that's where it's going to go. The spirit belongs to God. And wherever your soul goes, don't determine where your spirit goes. Because the spirit is going to return to God. And the soul is going to be, to, to be determined on what your decisions are here on earth. So in 18, it says, he that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. So we have to establish our faith and our belief in God. So I, we got us our scriptures. I would suggest everybody go back and be reading them too. Now we're going to speak a little bit about trust. So you have to, once you believe and accept Jesus for who he is and have faith in God, then you have to start having the trust, the hope, the confidence in him. So now we're going to go over to, song, uh, okay, I'm sorry, Proverbs. We're going to do two scriptures. We're going to do Proverbs 3, and then we're going to do Psalms 37. We're going to do Proverbs 3 first. And whoever would like to volunteer to read. I would like to do Proverbs 3, please. <laughs> Good evening, Sister Dante. I'm sorry I didn't even know you was with us. Praise the Lord. Good evening. I apologize for interrupting. I'm just excited. You are fine. You're fine. Okay, so I don't know how long you've been with us, but now we're doing trust. We've already spoke about faith. And this um, tonight's Bible study is about requirements in order to work in the kingdom of God. As a Christian, you have there's requirements. The requirements, I'll brief you real quick, is faith. You have to believe. You have to trust and you have to be obedient. Amen. So we've gone through faith and we've gone through belief. Now we're going to go into trust and trust. We're going to, this is, and I only chose a couple of scriptures for trust because trust is something that you're, you're going to be building each time your faith is increased by whatever it is that God brings you through, your trust and your confidence in God is going to build. So trust is you're just it's just gonna build as as when God does, you it's gonna build. Okay, so you can read Proverbs 3, and we're just gonna go on and read one through um, six. 
Okay, Proverbs 3, 1 through 6, and this is the New Living Translation. And on the top, it says, trusting in the Lord. My child, never forget the things I have taught you. Store my commands in your heart, for they will give you a long and satisfying life. Never let loyalty and kindness get away from you. Wear them like a necklace. Write them down. I'm sorry. Write them deep within your heart. Then you will find favor with both God and people, and you will gain a good reputation. Five, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will direct your paths. Amen. Amen. So it's about placing our trust in the Lord. He's not going to forsake us. He's not going to leave us. He's telling us to forget not my law. Don't forget it, but write it up on the table of your heart so that you can draw off of it. That just means to begin to just build your trust on him so that when things happen, let's say something comes up on you unaware, then You'll, you'll ground yourself and you will trust in him because we know that he's not going to leave us nor forsake us. And again, our trust is continuously being built with just daily, actually, because God never leaves us nor forsakes us and our faith is in him and he performs whatever it is that we need so we can trust him. We don't have to, our confidence is in him, not in our own strength, not in our, not in man, as you were speaking about, said, don't, don't put it into man. Don't put your trust in God. And that is a requirement because man is going to fail you. If you put your trust in man, that's where your trust is. So put your trust in God. That's a requirement for us to take our trust even from ourselves and put it in God. So I don't know who's, now we're going to do Psalms 37. I don't know who's going to read that one. Psalms 37. Yes, ma'am. And I'll give you the first. Okay. From 37. And we're just going to go on and read one because one through five. Psalm 37, one through five. Yes, ma'am. Fret not thyself because of evildoers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Amen. And he shall bring, oh, that was it. Six. Um, you know what? You can actually should... read to seven, because I've seen that. So we can read on to seven. Okay. Six. Uh Let's see, and he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. I have to get these eyes straight out of that cataract surgery. <laughs> It's okay. So again, here, here God not only instructs us to trust him, but he also comforts us in trusting in him. So we don't need to fret ourselves because of evildoers. 
you know, I know a lot of times, again, faith is not seen. So we have to, and we have to believe in God. So when we, and that, and it builds your trust. So don't worry about what someone else is doing. Trust in the Lord and do good so that we can dwell in the land and delight thyself also in the Lord. And, she, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. So when we trust in God, we put our trust in him and we wait on him to give us the desires of our heart. We can't put our trust in nobody else to give us the desires of our heart. Man fail you every time. But when we trust in the Lord, delight ourselves in him and then Commit thy way. See, that commit, remember when we were talking about obedience to come into compliance? Commit thy ways unto the Lord. Not my way, but we have to come into compliance of what God's will is, whatever God's way is for us. That's when things work out for us. That's when we're able to go forth because then we begin to put put our hope, put ourselves, align ourselves up with what's required of us to do work in the kingdom. Because again, it's all about kingdom work, building the kingdom. So we've done some trust, we've done faith, we've done belief and obedience, coming into compliance, you know, committing your ways, being submissive, being humble. Don't have to worry about um, being all prideful and wanting to do things your way. You have to come into compliance with the word of God. Not, not the word of God come in compliance to you, but we, that's a requirement for us. We have to come into compliance. We have to submit ourselves to, to, to God's will. Just as the scripture, for, uh, verse five says, commit thy ways unto the Lord, trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. And we know that he will. When we begin to trust, when we begin to have faith, when we begin to believe and when we begin to be obedient. So we're gonna go back into the One moment. Huh? I'm sorry, sorry about that. Deaconess wasn't sure of the time. <laughs> so we was just clarifying the time. So now we're gonna um, go back to Ephesians 10. And we're going to talk about being strong because we're going to have to be able to be strong to increase and to be able to endure. So let's go to Ephesians 10. I'm sorry, Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6. And we're going to start. We're going to read. I'm just going to read. Verse one, only because it aligns up with obedience. Child, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. So there God is telling us again, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. So come into compliance and do what you're supposed to do so that it can be well with you. So we're going to speak about strong now, though. So we're going to go over to Ephesians 6 and 10. And we're going to read from verse 6. I'm sorry, from verse 10 through verse 13. 
Deaconess, can you read that, please? Yes. Okay, Ephesians 6, verses 10 to 13. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So being strong, the requirement for us to be strong is not in our own might because we are limited. My strength is limited. We read in faith where through faith, Sarah receives strength to receive, to conceive her child, first of all, because Sarah, I don't forgot how old she was, but she was really old. So she didn't have the strength to conceive a child. And she didn't have strength to deliver the child because she was in old age. But because of her faith, she receives strength from the Lord. So we have to be strong, not in our might, but in the power, be, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might, because he is all powerful. Whereas we are limited, he is limitless. So there's no limitation to him. I think pastor reads, there's one scripture, I can't call that scripture to memory, but it speaks about, is there anything too hard for God? And we know that it's not. And as we walk our, our life's journey with God, he proves it to us over and over yes. and over again. God never fails us. He never forsakes us. Sometimes when we go off on our own and we come out of compliance, then we run into a little hiccup. But when we come back into compliance, then our road smooths out again. So it's not just about us feeling or thinking or moving about in our own being and in our own capacity. It is about putting our faith in the right place. And when I say in the right place, because you can misplace your faith. So it's about putting our faith in the right place and the right place is in God. It's about believing in the right one. And the right one is Jesus Christ. It's about trusting in what we know will never fail us. And we know that God will never fail us. And it is about being obedient to keep us in compliance and aligned so that we won't be finding ourselves in verse 12, wrestling against not flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places and getting defeated. Because when we go out on our own, we are, we'll be defeated, just period. Because Jesus died, the blood of Jesus covers us. And without the blood, we're out of the ark of safety. So we need to make sure that we stay in the ark of safety. 
putting our trust and our hope, our belief in him. Being obedient unto him, because if we're not obedient unto him, we obedient unto something or somebody <laughs> or something. No, yes, we are. Lord. Yes, Lord. So, you know, we be, be obedient and be in compliance with the order of God so that we can stay in the ark of safety so that we can be, be um, covered. So we have, this is one of the ones, so I'll say this one for last. It is Joshua 1. Now, this is something really, this here, I just love this. I think this is the perfect scripture to the, the one to end on because it shows everything. It shows faith. It shows belief. It shows trust. It shows obedience. It, 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 it shows uh, 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 strength and it shows courage because as we read, courage, the ability to do something, even something that's frightening to us. So we're going to finish off tonight in um, Joshua. So Joshua's the Old Testament. And we're going to go to Joshua 1. So this was after the death of Moses and Joshua was about to take over and lead the people of Israel. Okay, so um, am I right? Wait a minute, Joshua 1. I hope I'm doing that. I hope I'm right. Yes, I am. Okay. So can I get a volunteer to read um, Joshua 1, verse 1 through 3? Joshua. Chapter one, one through three. Yes, ma'am. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. Okay, so verse one through three, right away, the Lord just comes down and just speaks to Joshua. And he gives him an order right away. He just tells him, Joshua, his servant Moses is dead. So now you got to do it. So Joshua, you got to have the courage to do this. I know you might be afraid, but Joshua, you're going to have to have the courage to do this. You getting ready to take the people into the promised land. So Joshua was faced with something that he, he, he was with Moses. But Moses was the leader. So now here Joshua finding himself, the Lord is speaking to him as he did Moses and telling him, go, arise, get up and go. And wherever your feet land, that's the place that, that I've already given to you. So he's, he's, he's telling him what to do but he's equipping him 
He's telling him, he's equipping him with strength and courage because he's encouraging him. He's encouraging Joshua, you can do it. And I need you to do it or not need you, but I'm choosing you to do it because pastor said, God don't need us to do nothing. So Joshua was the chosen one at this point. So now can somebody else read from four, five and six? Four, five and I got six. it. Okay, you got it. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay, four. From the wilderness, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river of Euphrates. I can't say that word. And all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward going down of of the sun shall be your cost. Coast. Coast, excuse me. There shall not be any man be able to stand before thee all these days of thy, thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, yes, Lord, nor forsake thee. Be strong and for, and of all uh, Excuse me, be strong and of a good courage, for unto the, this people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Amen. I'm 40, you, I'm you, you, go. you're, you're good for now. Okay. So here the Lord tells, tells Joshua. You're going to go over here. I'm going to get, you're going to lead the people. So in four, he's telling him, where all you got to go? You're going to have to go through the, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river. And then he told him, all of this is going to be your coast. This is, you, you guys are going to inhabit all of this. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. So, you know, and Moses is the one who, who led them out of Egypt. When they was in Egypt and they was captive and Pharaoh the king didn't wanna let them go. And so then the land had to be plagued with many plagues. And then finally, uh, Pharaoh had had enough and <laughs> he let them go. And then they came to the, was it the, I forget which river it was. So I don't want to misquote. The river where Pharaoh was behind them and the water was in front of them. And, and God wow. told them to put us down over and the sea party and they crossed over on dry land. So now he's telling Joshua, just as I was with Moses, I will be with thee also. I will not fail thee and I will not forsake thee. So he's encouraging him because God knows our frailments. He knows, he knows our weaknesses. He knows that, okay, Joshua, now Joshua's chosen to do this, it's going to take courage to do it because I'm sure Joshua kind of, you know, anything that we're not used to doing and now I got all these people, now I got to lead them. But God assured him and just as he's seen the faith of Moses, it took his own faith now. You can't operate in Moses' faith. You got to operate in your own faith, Joshua. You can't, you can't utilize this. You can't, you, you can't use Moses' belief. You got to believe for yourself now, Joshua. You can't, you can't borrow uh, Moses' trust. You got to trust God for yourself now, Joshua. You can't borrow the obedience of, of, of Moses. You got to obey for yourself, Joshua. So verse... Seven, 
Deaconess, if you would read verse 7. Absolutely. Verse 7. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest <laughs> observe to do according to all the law, which Moses, my servant, commanded thee, turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithsoever thou goest. I have to uh, keep unmuting myself. So you see how God is encouraging him and assuring him because he knows that this is what we need because sometimes we do get afraid but yes. God himself encourages Jesus. us and assures us just like he did Moses to Joshua but now again Joshua I know you got to believe it for yourself so I'm assuring you just what I did for Moses I'm gonna do the same thing for you and then verse nine, Sister Shante, you want to read verse nine? Because it's about God commanding him to be strong and courageous. See, we got to be strong and we got to be courageous when it comes down to working in the kingdom. Yes, ma'am. Is that Joshua one? Yes, yes, that's Joshua uh, one and nine. Yes, one moment, please. Okay, Joshua, one, nine. Yeah. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Amen. Now, once again, God himself encouraging Joshua. Because again, it's about building our faith. It's about building our trust. It's about building our belief. And it's about being obedience to God. But in order for us to do that, we have got to be strong and we got to be courageous. Now, God told Joshua all of this. He let him know I'm going to assure, he assured Joshua, right? And now let me show you what God did for Joshua out of Joshua's obedience because he came into compliance. He forsaked himself, okay, I don't know, Lord, I'm going to obey you. And go to Joshua 10. This is going to be our last scripture. Joshua 10. And we're going to be in verse 13, uh, 12 through 14. Who haven't read? Is there anyone with us tonight that has not read? Everybody has had the opportunity to read? Yes. Okay. Okay. Oh, Sister Diana, I think you okay. can finish. Okay. So, Joshua, Joshua what? Yeah, yeah. See, this is what God do for us when we put our faith in him. When we put our trust in him, when we believe in him, when we obey him, when we in the strength of his might, this is what God does for us. And I want you to read Joshua 10, verse 12 through 14. Joshua 10, verse 12 through 14. Okay. Uh, on the day the Lord gave the Amorites over to Israel, Joshua said to the Lord in the presence of Israel, Sun, stand still over Gibeon, and you, moon over the valley of 
I don't know that one. I think. Yes. Yes. So the sun stood still and the moon stopped till the nation averaged itself on its enemies. As it is written in the book of Jashar. The sun stopped in the middle of the sky and delayed going down about a full day. There has never been a day like it before or since a day when the Lord listened to a human being. Surely the Lord was fighting for Israel. Now, that is what we get when we put our trust in God, when we obey God. I don't know if anybody have the King James Version. Does anybody um, tonight have the King James Version? I do. Will you read those scriptures in the King James Version, please? Verse 12 through 14. Yes, ma'am. Then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Ajalon. And the sun stood still, the sun stood still, and the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. It is, it is not this written in the book of Jasher. So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hastened not to go down about a whole day. And there was no day like that before it or after it, that the Lord hearkened unto the voice of man for the Lord fought for Israel. Amen. Because of Joshua's trust, faith, and belief in God, and because of his obedience, Joshua spoke to the Lord and asked the Lord because they was fighting against the Amorites and they needed to win the battle, but it was getting close to the sun going down and he commanded the sun to stand still. And the sun, and he said, Son, stand still. Let me see. Son, stand thou still. And the sun stood still. And the moon stayed, meaning that the moon didn't move, it stayed until the people had avenged themselves and um, avenged themselves upon their enemies, okay? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hastened not to go down about a whole day. And there has, and there was no day like that before it or after it, that the Lord hearkened unto the voice of a man. For the Lord fought for Israel. The Lord fought the battle. The Lord allowed the victory because he honored, he honored the obedience of Joshua. Joshua listened, Joshua obeyed, and God hearkened unto his voice. Now that's true faith, belief, trust, obedience, strength, and courage, all right there. And that is, is pleasing to God. And when our ways please God, he, he fights for us. The word of God says when a man ways please God, he'll make even his enemies be at peace with him. He didn't say you wouldn't have the enemy. He just said that he would make them be at peace with you. I tell you, I thank you guys for this time. Um, that's it for me for the lesson. Uh, let me pray my way out. Dear Lord, I thank you and I praise you, Heavenly Father. I hope that my 
that my work was pleasing to you, Lord. I thank you for trusting me to teach your people. And I just thank you for the opportunity. I am humbled by it and I am excited by it. And I thank you and I give your name all the praise, all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus name, dear Lord, help us to increase our trust in you. Help us to increase our faith in you. Help us to increase our belief in you. Help us to obey you more. Help us to to not be in our own strength, but in Mm -hmm. the strength of your might and encourage us as we go. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. You did a great amen. job, sister. Yes, and benediction. Yes, that was wonderful. Benediction. Yes. Oh, can I and do benediction? You, sister, sister um, Smart, you can do the benediction for us. Okay. Yes. Psalms 19 and 14 says, let the words of my mouth. Let, let the, the words, words of my mouth. mouth. And the meditation of my heart and, and the, the meditation, meditation of, of my heart, heart be acceptable in thy sight. Be acceptable, be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, O Lord, o Lord my, strength, my strength, my strength, and my redeemer. And my, and my redeemer. redeemer. In Jesus' name. In Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Beautiful sister. Yes. 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 Beautiful. Thank you, Father. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Beautiful. Absolutely. Thank you. Beautiful. Beautiful church. Excuse me, Sister Jeanette. Yes, ma'am. I have a quick question pertaining to the study that we read um just now in verse 13. Is it okay to ask you? Yes, ma'am. Josh. Okay, because uh, it says, is this not written in the book of Jasher? Now, what book is that? Are we supposed yeah. to know of that book or something? Mm-hmm. Where, where is this book at? That's, That's something first. for me to study. Me too, because I'm like, Holy Spirit. I've never heard of book of Jasher. Me either. Yeah, that's something, that's something for us all to study. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Okay, because a friend of mine, a sister in Christ, um, had shared with me a few months ago that that was taken out of the Bible, and she showed me this uh, specific scripture pertaining Jasher. So this is the second time that I've seen this name, and it's in the Bible, so I just want to seek God, and like I want the Holy Spirit to reveal it to me as well. Okay, thank you. Amen. Okay, good night, everyone. Sister, you ain't gonna stop the recording.